Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp and we are getting started with our chapter one which is basics of software testing as a part of this tutorial we are still continuing with what is testing as a part two. Now as a part of this particular tutorial we'll be getting into some of the basic terminologies and understanding uh, what exactly it is all about when it comes to certain basic fundamental terms and definitions of testing. As we are talking about a uh, quick basic introduction to software testing, we certainly have to get started with getting a clarity on certain terms which we will be using quite often hereafter in several other tutorials and we want to make it clear to all of you while uh, getting started right in the beginning itself. So when we talk about certain words like uh, when it comes to the issues uh, in testing, a lot of people randomly uses the word like uh, error, bug, defect, fault, or failure. But if you probably think deeper into that, you do understand that not all these terminologies are same, right? They are different from each other. And we just can't blindly say that, oh, there's an error in the code, or there's a defect in the code, or there was a failure in the code. No, they has to be used wisely, professionally when working with software testing and must have a right definition to it because you can be asked about it that why are you referring a particular defect as an error or why are you referring an error as a defect? So having a right definition, having a right meaning with you would certainly make sense a lot to anyone being used in the industry. So let's start with these three terminologies which is error, defect and failure. Now error is being understood as a synonym of mistake and mistake is being very generic term generic word telling you that when a human does anything wrong unintentionally right when a human does anything wrong unintentionally is what you call it as mistake and similarly when we do the same mistake in an programming environment is called as an error right so error is perfectly fine as equal to mistake but mistake is quite generic like independent of the environment independent of any particular practice but error is dependent or related to programming environment so when a developer does a mistake which is a uh, human doesn't doing anything wrong than expected is what you call it as error so when a human does anything wrong unintentionally and that results into unexpected outcomes is what you refer to as an error, right? So that's the definition of error, which is equivalent to mistake. Now, what is a defect? Defect is from a user perception, like a tester being testing the system. So when a tester is evaluating or validating a particular piece of code or functionality on the application, he or she will observe a deviation, right? So generally the story begins with a test case which you're writing and executing on the application and that test case fails. It results into a defect because your deviation is observed. Your expected is not equal to the actuals. Your requirement says it should be red in color and the actual says it is black in color. So there's a deviation between the expected and the actual and that's what you call it as defect. Generally defect is the formal name of that issue or deviation but uh, informally you can also call it as bug or fault right a lot of organizations will use both the terminologies they would say what we internally find is bug and what clients or maybe external people find like customer or end users is called as defect but it's just that there are synonyms right there's no big difference between uh, bug and defect they're all the same just the deviation from the expectations what is failure? A lot of people think that failure is all about the product failure into the market. No. Failure is an approach of finding defect. Failure is an approach of finding defect. So when you run a test case and if a test case fails or when something which you are performing on the screen and that fails on the screen is what you call it as a failure. So if I have to use all these words into a particular statement, I would say a tester has visibility to failures which results into identification of a defect and that defect is due to an error. 
If you want, you can just rewind this and re-listen to this statement once again, but makes pretty much the sense. The second one is testing and debugging. A lot of us, we try thinking when we do slightly deeper dive without the knowledge that testing is about finding issues, debugging is also about finding issues in the code. So are they same? No. Again, to the outside world people, it may sound same. But when you are into the practice, when you are working in the industry of software testing, you would understand now testing is different than debugging. How? So testing is basically about a process where you generally run test cases and find defects. A tester is never responsible for analyzing the root cause of it or fixing the defects. So testing is limited to just finding the defects. Whereas debugging deals with getting into, first of all, analyzing the issue reported, whatever the tester reports to developer, developer will spend time to understand that first, get into the root cause because not always a defect is what you see. It might be due to some other contradictions or other incompatible code in the application. So get to the root cause and fix the issue. So three major parameters are debugging, analyzing the issue, getting into the root cause and fixing the issue is what you call it as debugging. Testing is limited to finding defects. So also the second point here to add is that a tester is just limited to testing and debugging is performed by developers. A tester is not, tester is not responsible for debugging the code in order to fix the issue. Also to add here, people will now have a question in mind that if I'm an automation tester, am I also responsible to do debugging? Oh yes, of course. Because now the environment is not about testing the product, it's about building an automation test. That is automated test suite or writing some automation scripts. Then you are developer of that particular automation script. And yes, the moment you become the developer, debugging applies to you. So that time you're not a tester of the application, you are developer of an automated test, right? So that's the major difference between testing and debugging and I hope you are now clear with that. The next thing what we are talking about in this tutorial is also to talk about the quality assurance and quality control. A lot of us have misunderstanding on what is quality assurance and quality control. On a very high level, in a very simple and layman level, quality assurance is all about defining the steps, procedures, methods, actions, set of events, which will lead to achieve quality in the product. For example, planning, defining the strategy, defining the matrices, defining the schedule of the work, like when we should start with the testing, should I wait for something else, Let's setting up the environment, you know, right set of uh, environments and right set of tests, data, a lot many other things, which you are taking as a kind of, you know, uh, procedure set of events, which you would do, if you do, you achieve quality. So quality assurance is generally set of people or set of those activities, which if conducted will result into quality in your product. For example, risk analysis. Risk analysis is quality assurance. That if you analyze risk, anticipate the risk much earlier, you know how to handle it or mitigate it. But if you get surprises, of course there'll be a failure, not quality. So a test manager or senior testing resources or test leads will be referred to as QA, right? And on the other hand, when you talk about the quality control, it's all about performing those activities, like writing test cases, preparing test data, designing the test environment, executing the test cases, logging the defects. Performing those root level work is quality control. So quality assurance is defining deep measures and quality control is performing those activities. So again, there could be a question in some of your minds that why do we refer a test engineer as a QA? It's actually QC, right? As per the definition? Yes, you are correct. You are a QC, quality control. Your responsibilities are only to write test cases, execute test cases, prepare the test data, prepare the test environment, report the defects, but not to define the measures. Defining the measures will be done by the test manager. So now, are you saying, Neeraj, that organizations are making a big mistake by calling us QA? Yes, they are doing it wisely. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Yes, the reason they are calling you as a QA, that no matter you are a fresher, 
you may have innovative mind, you may have great uh, outstanding skills about certain technologies, or you might be even one year old tester in the organization, but you have great contributions to make. So we give respect to every single tester by calling them as a QA that, hey, you are not just hired to perform these set of actions or writing test cases and executing them. You are free to participate in certain events like retrospectives, test planning, etc., and contribute there. So we give respect to you by calling you as QA, though you are actually a QC. So do we have anyone in the industries called as QC as such? Oh yes, that's also correct. For example, Game Tester. Game Tester is a wonderful example of QC. There we don't call them as QA. We call them as Quality Control Tester. Why? Because these processes are hard-coded. We don't really have anything to contribute or change in the plan. When you talk about the product-based industries, they have a hardcore process to develop the system or test the system. No practice changes over the years or decades. They stick to a standard method always. So testers there do not contribute from their side. Even if they contribute, they will not agree to that saying that this is our organization-wide standard and we just can't you know, deviate from there. So that's where these people are referred to as quality control because they're not allowed to contribute to any kind of modifications or to any kind of measures which can improve the quality of the system. They're only responsible for playing the games in order to test the game. So they only run the test cases and submit the results. That's where you can find quality control engineers as well, which is kind of, you know, a little difficult because you don't get to learn anything new. You don't have your innovative minds in action. So look forward to be a QA rather than QC. All right. So that's all we had for today's tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with more interesting things in our upcoming tutorials. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm also there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.